Janelle, what's going on? Thank you so much yeah. for coming on. Super excited to talk to you. Um, we last spoke in Scotland, but we've been texting back and forth. And for people that yeah. don't know who Janelle is, Janelle's been on Big Brother, four times The Amazing Race, Snake in the Grass, and most recently, Traders. Janelle, yes. it's, you look at your life, and, and like, we're young, like, relatively speaking. Yeah. Like, you've done a lot. Like, do you look back at what you've done on reality TV and what's your opinion of it? Um, I look back and it's kind of like a fever dream. You know, um, I've been doing this for so long. It's become a hobby of mine. Um, you know, and Bananas and I have talked about this. It's like a hobby, like I show up every one or two years and, you know, hey, I'm back, guys. Let's just see what I can do. Um, it's more of a hobby than anything. Um at this point in my life. But yes, it is interesting to think about how far back this is this goes, how many relationships I have from these shows and what it's done for my life. And what has it done for your life in the grand scheme of things? Like when you look back on this, like this oh. affected my life this way. You know, it just did only positive things for my life. Only positivity. Um, I'm a realtor. So I'm, a, you know, as a realtor with people that have never done TV, they'd be like, God, that's like free advertising. Like people pay thousands and thousands of dollars a month to be on billboards and to send these postcards out and this and that. I get it for free. So um, it's great for my real estate business. Um, if you are a buyer or seller in Minneapolis, it's been great for that. But it's what also... Kind of what kind of uptick yeah. do you see? Is it like more emails, more phone calls? You're more recognizable. Like what is like the actual. Oh my God. I've had eight calls in the last week with people moving to Minneapolis. I mean, we're talking like, let's say a hundred grand in commissions. So it, it's really exciting. Um, I love it. And the fans love it too, because um, you bought, you bought a million houses, Dan, you know, like it's nice to know the realtor that you're working with. Because some, you know, these people are reaching out, they're moving to my city and they're like, you know what? I want to work with Janelle. Um, we love her and she would be a great realtor. So it's just really, it's, it's a nice uptick and it's um, really great for my business. Um, it's fantastic for my business. I don't even know how to be a regular realtor, if that makes sense, because there's so many realtors out there that have to really grind and find clients. And I mean, as great as it is for me, sad for them, like these clients come to me. Well, then so, also that, that speaks to what you do, because I'm sure then your business grows, like you do a great job for them. They found yeah. you on reality TV and then they refer you and they keep coming back. So it's not like you're not a great realtor. It's just, you may have like found a way yeah, to leverage you can it. Easily look up my sales and say, wow, this chick sold 76 homes last year. I mean, I've got it going on. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, so you're hustling so in real life, but when, whenever I watch you or happen to be on the same show with you, like you play these games really hard, yeah. but I think one of the unique things about you is, is that you don't, when the game's over, it's like the game's over. How are you able to, was it like that your first time through? Like, I feel like you've never even, you've been through some, like some tough stuff and like very iconic moments and people being mad at you and this and that. But when you walk away, it's like, like you're good. Yeah, I guess that's just something in my personality. I never take things um, for face value in a game because it's not real life. You're playing a game on reality TV. So um, I know for a lot of people, they don't ever get over that hump and that's unfortunate. But for me, I'm like, I guess maybe I'm just like, wait, are you seriously mad at me for it? because I said that? Like, I'm like, what? <laughs> um, so yeah, I really don't take anything from any game I've ever been in and bring it into my real life and when you say that's like part of your personality from being around you like i feel like there's people that have a persona like oh i don't really care but they care but being around you i just feel like that's genuine to who you are like you just don't care like you're confident in who you are where did that de where did that develop in your life my confidence um gosh i would say very early on um maybe my early 20s I, you know, very young, I became like a model and I was into acting and it was really a grind of just really not giving an F, Dan, you know, like 
you're going to get a lot of no's. You're going to get some yeses. You're going to get some, I hate you's, but at the end of the day, you got to just love yourself and just move on. And, and prior to that, and I don't want to like put words in your mouth, but we've talked a little bit about like okay. back in the day, like how you grew up and I don't want to like say like ugly duckling, but didn't you say like when you grew up, it wasn't like you walked out like this bombshell in no, middle school or high awesome. school. Like when I was in elementary school and early middle school, I was very awful looking. And it wasn't that I would, you could have taken the things away and been like, this could be a beautiful young lady, but I didn't grow up with money. So I had like the worst clothing ever. I had glasses. I needed braces, but my family couldn't afford them. Um, so people teased me. They were like, oh, you're so ugly. And I think for me, being kind of the ugly duckling thing in elementary school, my personality was always really important to me. So I always just tried to be like, one-on-one -on -one with people and get them to see my personality and like me. And then by the time I hit about 14 and I got contacts and I got my teeth straightened out, the people were literally eating their words. And it was kind of fun to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was actually pretty awesome because I think a lot of the guys that were teasing me that I was so busted and like, they said so many awful things to me, like just horrible things. And they were basically just like, I cannot believe you look like this. Will you please forgive me and go on a date with me? And of course not. I was like, you're dead to me. <laughs> so, so you grew up in, in what area of Minnesota? Rural Minnesota, Northern Minnesota, um, Grand like Rapids. Farm? Uh, woodsy. Like I'm talking redneck country. Um, pretty okay. much like everyone, not my vibe by any means. Like the people there were like camouflage. They like to hunt and fish, things that I don't like to participate in. I always felt like I didn't belong there. Um, just a really, really small town. Everyone knew everyone. When did you decide, hey, I want to get out of here and experience a different life? Was it, do you remember when, how old you were or what happened? I do. Um, I was watching 90210 when I was 12. And I was like, I don't, I don't belong in this life. I know that I don't belong in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. And uh as soon as I'm of age, I will be leaving. So you graduated high school and then you're just like deuces, I'm going to LA or Miami. What was your next um, move? I did one semester of college. Where'd you um, go? I went to University of Minnesota Duluth. Okay. And um, yeah, I was basically like, this is not for me. My parents were so upset, but I was like, I need to, actually I did, two, I did a full year. I did a full year of my freshman year of college, but that summer I like saved up every penny and was like, I'm moving to Los Angeles. And my parents were like, you do not have the money to do this. And I was like, I'm doing it. I think I moved to LA with like maybe $900 and like a beat up car. What were you doing for work? Do you remember like some of your early jobs or what you did so to save? Yeah, so like what to save up for my trip to LA? Yeah. Oh, I was a waitress at Pizza Hut, Perkins. I think I worked at a gas station. I had like three jobs. So you're just hustling because you're like, after this year of school, I'm out of here. You go to yeah. L.A. I needed did to you... save every dollar to get to L.A. So you get to L.A. Did you know anyone or were you just like, um, you roll the dice? So I moved to Los Angeles with two other girls who also wanted to drop out of college and do the L.A. thing. Um, so I moved with two women that I knew from college. OK, so you so you established base there. And then, like, how do you go from rural Minnesota yeah. to LA and figure it out. Like, do you remember thinking it was like- horrible. It was horrible. We uh, didn't have any money. We slept on the floor. Um, we didn't even have electricity for the first two weeks because we couldn't afford it. Um, we were legit poor, like for real. So I what did you do? Was... How did you get, like how, as a kid, how did you figure that out? I mean, it's a 19 year old kid, 18 year old, whatever. I was like 18, like I was 18. I just figured out, I mean, we were eating ramen and potatoes, like just the most random food that we could get. Um, I guess figuring out for me was just really just beating the streets, working, working, working. I mean, I am a grinder. Even to this day, I can, I can work hours and hours and tirelessly. So um, I really threw myself into just getting as much money as I could, finally getting a better apartment, getting a bed, <laughs> you know, <laughs> little things like that. <laughs> So you're pursuing modeling and acting yeah. and then there's clearly like a, a career pivot for you. 
Is there, yeah. was there a point when you're like, okay, this is not working and I don't want to do this anymore? Or was it that big brother was just kind of like oh, opportunity um, presented to you? So I actually, I started working hard. I finally got my own apartment. I got a great agent and I got a great manager and things were going well for me in LA. Um, really, really well. I mean, I even, I actually read for dodgeball with Vince Vaughn, I think on like one of my editions, I made it all the way to like the final reading test screening of that. Um, and I did film Bruce Almighty. I think the ending for my career in Los Angeles at that point was, I think I realized at 24, God, I, cause I had been in LA for a while then. And I figured, yeah, I think I'm going to want a family one day and I don't want to be in LA working like this, tirelessly pursuing an acting career or modeling. It was exhausting. Um, it was so up and down financially because sometimes you get like huge checks like i remember my first check from bruce almighty and i was like oh my god i'm a legit cast member this is so cool and then i didn't get a job for a while so i think the ending for me was just like what's next i've got to do something else because i just didn't feel like it was working out that well do you still get royalty checks from bruce almighty or how does that work yeah i still get royalty checks i mean they can be as much as like $43 today. Yeah. I mean, but you know, it's something and I have a ba pension from it. Back in the day were the royalty checks bigger, like as it was closer to the release or on TV, or was it always just, um, so Bruce Almighty was actually one of the top grossing films, um, ever of all time. So my royalty checks were huge. Like, <laughs> I mean, 60 grand, 10 grand. It was insane. Um, God, and I was thinking, if I'm literally just this stupid cast member and I'm not even speaking in the movie, what the hell is Jennifer Aniston doing? <laughs> like, come on. They're making real money. <laughs> so you go from Bruce Almighty and then it, you said it dries up for a little bit. So then we're, what's your like, next move or what happens? Yeah, and I just, I wanted fun. And I, to be honest, I had like a really bad breakup in LA. Like devastating, like heartbroken. Like I need to get out of here. And LA is a small town. If you are a young woman and you go out, you're going to see your exes. You're going to see them with new women. It was like heartbreaking for me. So I was like, you know what? I think it's time to move. And um, I had my eyes on either Miami, Miami or New York City to move to. I thought, what two other great cities to be in? I know I can find work anywhere doing something. So um before I decide on which city I want to move to, let's pack everything up and put it in storage and figure out what city is for me. And I actually spent the summer in Europe and I basically partied for three months. <laughs> um, you know, I was 24. <laughs> so um, long story longer, I met my, my castmate who I brought on season six. I met her in Europe, Ashley Evans, who was my secret partner in season six. You just randomly met her in Europe or did you? I, one of my girlfriends who was like this model in LA, she was dating a billionaire and I was on his yacht <laughs> and this chick, Ashley comes on the yacht and she was my cabin mate. Like we were in the same room. So she was my roommate and I stayed on this yacht for like three or four weeks and we just got to talking and she was like, you know, um, we're gonna, it was like almost the end of summer. She's like, summer's ending. I'm gonna go back to my job in Miami and I am looking for a roommate if you are interested. And I was like, God, that sounds so fun. Yeah, like I think I do um, after I'm done in Europe, like I would like to move in with you. And so she became my roommate. And then, how, so you moved to Miami and then how do, you, how do you end up on Big Brother from like, so you meet the essentially like a random connection random. in Europe. Like that's one of those life things, like you just meet. So I lived with Ashleya in Miami Beach and she had a job at this nightclub called Mansion, which was like this really fun club in South Beach. And she was like, I can get you a job there. And so I worked at Mansion and I was like, this is so fun. Like I <laughs> love being a cocktail waitress. Like you meet all these fun people. Basically, and you get paid a ton, right? Like it's, it's a like a ton of money and you basically party for a living. I'm like, this is dope. I love it. and. I remember doing that for like almost the whole season. So like September to April, I was like busy, busy. And then Big Brother was casting and I thought, God, it gets so freaking hot in Miami. I don't want to stay in Miami for the summer. 
And so I thought they were like, Big Brother, it's all summer long. I was like, maybe I'll just do Big Brother for the summer. And so that's what I did. So did you? Did they come after you? Did you go to open casting call? Did you apply? Do you remember what happened? Uh, it was kind of like an open casting call, but I didn't really know what I was even trying out for. You know what I mean? Like I had yeah. seen a little bit of the show, not like the biggest fan. I had watched season three, mm-hmm. but um, they definitely wanted me and pursued me. I'd had, yeah. I thought I had no shot in hell of getting on this show, by the way. I was like, really? Whatever. Really? I was like, there's no way they're going to pick me. I don't when, know why. So, so you go through open call, then I'm guessing they fly you to LA and you go through finals. Do you remember, was there any moment when you're talking, you're like, okay, this is how they're going to cast me? Or were you just kind of like just Janelle and being like, hey, I'm just going to be me and just, just run it? Um, their storyline for me was very much, uh, I think they discovered my personality. They must have early on in the casting because they were like, you know, I think I had like a rich boyfriend at the time and they were like, what kind of watch is that? And I was like, it's Cartier and it was like covered in diamonds. They're like, did you buy that? I was like, no, it was given to me. And they were asking me about my travels and my trips and this and that. And they were like, what do you do now? And I was like, I'm a cocktail waitress at a bar. And they were like, what is that? And I was like, well, it's for rich people. And they were like, <laughs> they had never in their life met anyone like me, I don't think. And then they also brought up like, you know, because there was some problems in the nightclub with me and other women because we didn't necessarily share the tips. So I was... Wait, wait, wait. wait Janelle in, in competition, what do you mean you didn't share the tips? Is that like typical? In the- I was selfish. No. So like when I worked at this nightclub, there was like sections, right? And like most places you would pool the tips. Okay. The place that I worked on, if, you know, if I knew people or if I was extra flirty with the doorman and the people that book the tables, they would give me like the best tables. And they always did. And so the other girls were like, I only made a thousand dollars tonight and Janelle made 10. That's not fair. And I was like, sorry. <laughs> Sounds really <laughs> familiar. Going over that in cast and they were like, dude, you seriously like, so and I was like, yeah, the girls at my nightclub kind of hate me. But, you know, and I think that's like a great glimpse into like your actual like competitive nature, not only on these shows, but in real life. So, OK, so then you go out there, you get cast. I mean, at any point, like because I remember as a like kid but or watching that season and it was like you're like dynamite, like everyone loved you. Did you go into yeah. that like thinking about how you would be perceived? Because you, you've you came off and continue to come off every show as like one of the most beloved rootable characters you know, you know I never of all time how people perceive me or if if people cared for me or not yeah. i really didn't care i'm just a naturally extremely competitive person and um i am like that in business now in sales i was like that in sales previously like i was like that in modeling like i'm just very competitive i was like that in big brother i have a very but, competitive personality do you remember getting off the show and then being, what was your reaction to how the public received you when you got off? Because essentially, like you go from okay, you've been on, like, you've been in movies and stuff. Yeah. You know, you you work your job, you get paid well, but you come off and like people like love you. I was it, shocked. It, I was absolutely shocked. I was like, you mean to tell me after I called people bitches and told them to fuck off that they actually even like me and I'm not being like crucified? I was so confused. I was like, what, what is going on? I couldn't believe it. And then at the same time, like, did you ever think like, what did you do with that? Right. So like, Hmm. you know, I I just feel like for someone, like you're in such a unique position. A lot of people go on shows, but a lot of people are not like you in terms of like, you're exactly, you know, uh, we know each other pretty well. Like you just are who you are. Like, I think you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you go on a show, like you turn it up a bit because you know how to make good TV. But for the most part, like you're being Janelle. Yeah, you know? I've so, just been true to that. I'm just being me. I'm going to go in there and be me and they can like me or love me, you know, whatever. So, OK, so you go on and you, you end up going on Big Brother four times. You, you've been on Amazing Race. You've been on Snake in the Grass and now Traders. My question to you is like, why do you keep coming back? Why do I? I think we kind of answered this early on like it's at this point just a game to me it's just a hobby to me it's just something i do it's like the smallest little 
layer of my personality that I sometimes like to dive deep into again here and there in some moment in time in my my life. And so, you know, you're, you're married and you have like three kids that, you know, are of age, age where they know what's going on. Do they, how much do you talk to them about it? Do they understand like your place in like subculture um, of entertainment? You know, since we were very young babies and very young, they were confused why people would stop them when I would take them to the Minnesota Zoo. Why do people stop my mom and take pictures with her? They thought it was normal for a while just to walk around with your mom and people stop and get in a group photo. And then they were like, why do people do that, mom? And I was like, they know me from TV. And they were like, oh, but you know, as a family, we've never watched my seasons. Um, we've never really watched my old stuff. I don't think they watch Traders now. I know a lot of people at my children's school watch Traders. But I don't think that they watch that. I think the kids nowadays only watch TikTok. So if I could post the show on my TikTok, they would probably watch it then. <laughs> but like to you, like they don't think anything of it. They could care less. They just kind of like, that's mom's thing. It's like her hobby. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they just want me to be a mom. That's it. So let me ask, have you ever, like, how do you balance that? So you have an incredible career, you have a family, you, you'll go off to shoot a show and, you know, Scotland and make great TV. Like, how do you balance that as Janelle? I mean, really, it's my husband helps me balance that. My husband is a huge part in, uh, you know, watching my children while I'm away. Um, you know, being such a great dad and helping me. That's that's he's like a major component to this is my my husband is such a huge help. And so when you get the call from you know, from Studio Lambert or the casting, whoever for yeah. traders, what is that conversation like with your husband? Is it like, hey, like, you know, here we go again? Or like, how does that go down in your family? Uh, it's like the DJ Khalid thing, like, <laughs> and another one. No. <laughs> um, I'm like, hey, got another call. What do you think? And he's, it's always like, okay, well, how long does this thing film? Like, how, what, what is the time? What, how much time is this going to be? Big Brother's always a tricky one to talk them into, <laughs> you know, because it's the time is so long and you just don't know. And I, I always tell him, don't worry, I'm going to go out right away. It's not going to be, it's, I'm literally just picking up a check, promise. And he'll be like, oh, all right. And he always agrees to it. Um, did, did, yeah, he's been such a help. Did you feel like that heading into Traders or did you feel like, hey, like this isn't a typical game where everyone's going to be taking shots at me the second I walk in through the door. What was no. your mind, your mindset heading into the traders? Um, mindset heading to the traders, have a lot of fun. Um, just really enjoy yourself. I didn't really, I didn't really, I knew to be a good faithful was to play really dumb or just be so bad at the game. But I was like, eh, no, I'm just going to have fun and I'm going to play as hard as I want to play. And I'm going to go after it because at the end of the day, I do need to be true to my personality myself. Like I can't pretend to be someone like Kevin, you know, I can't pretend to be MJ. I can only be me. And so even though I knew like the best strategy is to literally just like do nothing and be so bad at it. Um, I was like, oh God, I can't really do that because I'm not being true to myself. So my mindset was just like, go all out, go after it. Because at the end of the day, Dan, I mean, people for like, for people like me and you, the win isn't necessarily the win. The win is like repeatedly being asked to be come back to TV again and again and again. So to me, that win is just saying, wow, Chanel was great. Let's call her for X, Y, and Z. And do you think, so before we get into the traders, so you did the NBC show Snake in the Grass. And that was mm -hmm. like, that was during COVID, right? Uh, yes. It, well, COVID. But yes. Got it. So, so you do that and then you deliver, like, I didn't watch it, but yeah. that was your first experience with another network. Yes. When you did that and you walked away from that experience, were you like, okay, I killed that. And like, I know I'm in, or like, how did you feel? Cause yeah. that was a new show. It was like a experimental type deal. So like we had won that season, like me, Suri and Rachel, like we, we, we did it. We completed our task. But for me, it was like, it felt different than working with CBS. Um, 
And I was just very excited. I mean, I don't know about you, but right after that, I was asked to do season one of Traders. Like the mm -hmm. call was like, boom, like we need stay with us, stay with NBC. Like we want you on Traders one, but I just couldn't do it. Um, I had some scheduling conflicts with my daughter and their cheer and this and that. So that didn't work out. But um, I got I the call. I, I got the email or a reach out for Snake in the Grass and I saw the title. I'm just like, I didn't. You know, I, if I would have reached, I should have reached out to you. But anyways, no, I didn't. So I didn't. Yeah, I didn't get a call for so Traders one, but I said no to Snake in the Grass. It was great money too. You know, some of these shows, it's like, okay, well, what are you paying me? And if they, if they pay well, and the yeah. time commitment's not a lot, like it's kind of a no brainer for me. Yeah. So I mean, and for you, it's just another layer. It's to me, like for you to do it, it's like you're gonna make great TV. You're competitive, but also there's like a built in layer to like your real life, right? So like. This is not going to hurt your real life. It's only going to help your real life business. So it's only going to help your business. Yeah. So w when you turn traders down because you couldn't do it, were you like, mm -hmm. were you locked in in the first season and were you like, oh, I should have done this? Or what was your perspective? You know, um, you know, I'm really close with Rachel Riley. So yeah. we we gossip about once a month on the phone anyway. And um, I had called her. I think it was in May and I was just like, Hey girl, what's up? And I was like, Oh my God, like NBC totally called me for this show, but I couldn't do it. She's like, Oh my God, are you going? And I was like, no, I, I actually, I turned him down. I can't go. And she's like, Oh my God, I'm leaving in three days. They're flying me first class. It's going to be so amazing. And I was like, Oh, so you're doing like, then I was like really sad. It's like, Oh God, that sucks. Because I love working with Rachel on Snake in the Grass. I love playing Amazing Race with Rachel. And I was like, oh, that sucks. We don't get to play another game together. So I was kind of like disappointed that I was missing out. But in hindsight, our cast is so much better. <laughs> um, so I think I made the right choice. I, yeah. I really do. I do. So, okay. So let's talk about, so this season. So you go to Scotland. Yeah. Uh, we see each other coming out of the you know, the cars and you look at everyone else Yeah. at that, at that point for you, where you're like, okay, this is about to be probably one of the most memorable shows you're ever going on. Or like, do you remember what you were feeling when you got out of the, the trucks and you saw everyone like the crazy personalities? Yeah, I, mean, really? I think I knew right away just by what they were throwing at us for like our appearance fees and stuff. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, I was like, this is going to be a great cast. And wow, they've got like deep pockets. Like I'm so down. And then I saw like all the housewives and I was like, these are all celebrities. Like I don't, Legit, consider, yeah. I don't consider myself a celebrity. Like I am a realtor living in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I was like, dude, they put me on a show with celebrities. This is dope. This is going to be a, the best cast I've ever been on in my life. Never in my life will I be with that many celebrities. I don't, I don't know how you felt, but I felt like I liked everyone there. It's like, you know, when you're a big brother, you're like, okay, there's these people that you just can't oh, wait yeah. to get rid of. But there you're like, everyone has so many like cool stories, so much going on. And you're like, you kind of like, like everyone. Oh, I loved everyone. Everyone had done something in their life. Everyone was so accomplished. They had businesses. They were so successful. And yeah, I mean, in, you know, on BB14 and BB22, I was like, why did I do this? Like, come on. Like Shane from BB14, I was just like, wait, what do you do? And he was like, um, I helped my dad put up roofs. I'm like, okay. Um, just an odd duck. But um, but yeah, unlike the other seasons of Big Brother, I was like, this cast is absolute dynamite. Like, you just can't lose with this cast. It's impossible. So so you're playing so we start the game. And like in true Janelle fashion, like you are who you are, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's why it's, it's interesting to hear you say like you contemplated like maybe playing a different strategic role, but you're like, I can't do that. So yeah, like in a group full of everyone multiple times, you're like, forget you, I'm going to what they called being selfish. And in my mind, I'm like, no, like this girl is always under attack. Like, why yeah. would she? It's not to me. It's not selfish. It's just that's how you play these games. So when you first like had that presented to you in that environment, and you know those round tables are intense, 
Yeah. Like, were you shocked? Were you like, how did you prepare your am ammunition at those tables to like defend yourself? Because people always came after you. I think, well, first of all, for the very first mission, I thought I absolutely didn't need it because I didn't know who the traders were. You know, if there's a bunch of Bravo people in there, you know, I'm on the chopping block to be murdered for sure. So I was like, damn, I need to go for this shield. But also, I think I forgot about the fact, you know, because when I go into competition mode, I forget that these people from other competition shows don't really think like I think. They're confused and they're threatened by me having a diary room about the shield. Like they would have gotten the shield just to talk on TV where I was like, I'm trying to save my life in this game. Okay. Like if you guys want to die, that's fine. But like, I'm not going, I'm not getting murdered night one. Like, it's just not happening. So, so when you do this and then people approach you, like, were you surprised that that was the, like, oh, you're selfish as opposed to like taking it as like, no, you're just trying to prolong your life in the game. I tried to tell people I'm just prolonging my life in the game, but also I thought these people aren't thinking strategic because what trader is going to gun for a shield day one? Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on. It's just not going to happen. And they were like, well, it could be a trader trying to prevent uh, the faithful from, I'm like, there's literally 21 people. Like, why would that make sense numbers wise? Like you guys just don't think it through. And and I know there's a bunch of times throughout the castle where I saw you like trying to present ideas to people and they yeah. just kind of like, they just weren't like setting in. For you, like normally when you, when you play these games, like you're with people like either thinking yeah. exactly the same way or be like, yes, and this. So how big of a challenge was that for you? And how did you like adjust based off people that didn't kind of get it? Yeah, for the people that didn't get it, I quickly was like, that's not a faithful that I'm going to work with. You know, like, I think I had tried to work with Kevin day one with Peter and Peter even came to me and he was like, yeah, he's not very smart. He's like, did you ever think that based on things, Kevin would be so smart? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, and then the second he started talking game with you and I, it became very clear he wasn't. And I'm like, yes, it does. So I think identifying early on some of the dumber trader, some of the dumber like faithfuls that were just so new and green. I was like, that's definitely not someone that I want to put my trust in. Like, I'm not going to work with you because um, I didn't really have much skill in that that avenue i guess and and i think like i think you and i come from a different perspective where it's like they just didn't like i think if maybe kevin or whoever plays again they're probably going to do it a little different but yeah. it's like they just didn't have the experience i just i don't know were you, i was really surprised at how much like people just didn't like it was more about like what someone was like choking on or breathing than like hey let's actually look how the pieces to this puzzle fit who can we beat who can we not but like yeah. you you bring up peter what about him did you identify like this dude's sharp like he's a you know well, so i identified that he was a faithful within maybe the first 10 minutes of the game because of what happened with john so it really wasn't necessarily like, oh, I want to find like all the traders. I was like, okay, like I need some some strong faithfuls to work with. And um, I could tell Peter was always thinking and I was always thinking in the game. And um, we were always talking and helping each other because he would basically stop me from going after people. <laughs> He'd be like, that is not a faithful, you know, like the whole John thing. He like literally took me one day and he was like, John is a faithful and we need him for a number. Like you need to get real. And I was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm so stupid. And the same thing with Ekin Sue, like he literally tried to drill into me. He's like, Ekin Sue is not a traitor, Janelle. And I was like, oh, all right, <laughs> I'll leave <it> alone. <laughs> but um, he was just always thinking, like you could just tell just by getting to know Peter. Um, he didn't, he wasn't there for an appearance fee. He was there to play the game. Um, unlike a lot of other people that just wanted to be there to have camera time, or whatever, like Peter's there, like he, if you had watched his season and actually, you know, if you talked to him and I talked to him a lot, um, there were some things I think that hurt him. Like he was like feeling sensitive about as far as like his show and his mm -hmm. character. And 
um, he wanted to prove he wasn't like that. And so um, he wanted to play the game. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely went in like you have a preconceived notion about a bachelor, right? Like it's X, Y and Z. And I, you know, I don't watch the bachelor, but I felt like you quickly like you got to a point with him and I'm like, dang, like I let that like, like I'd like that grew really quickly and started to become an issue. And it, I feel like I wasn't the only person that noticed that. Did you ever feel any pressure from like other people about that? relationship with Peter in terms from like an alliance standpoint? No, because I felt like Peter and I also worked with Trishel and Bergy and John so closely, like Peter brought us all together. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it was like a really good leader. So I never felt pressure from Trishel or Bergy. And I always thought, God, we were so tight as an alliance, like, whatever, we always shared information. So as far as anyone else looking at me and Peter as someone to be messed with. I mean, I think the other faithfuls were like really looking to us for guidance. And, you know, I didn't really lead them in the right direction, but I also like, it was so difficult because I was working with you too. And I was like, it's such a fine line. Like you're literally like dancing with the devil. You know what I mean? So I was like, God, and I felt like the more you and I stopped talking game and Peter and I were constantly talking game, it pushed me closer and closer and closer to Peter. A thousand percent. And I did like some preparation for this interview and I watched like, I read some of your articles and it's like, you, you're like, I had Dan clocked from, you know, the early, early times. And like, we spent whatever, a month together in a house yeah. in Big Brother. So from my perspective, I'm like, okay, like Janelle, what did I do that you're like, you, you clocked me? Asking, like right now you're talking to me and you're smiling and you're laughing. Yeah. You doing that in scotland dan so was, was yeah. just like nervous or what, like what yeah. yeah like you were definitely very nervous and you were like it felt like i don't know how to explain it like when someone's got a secret to tell you but they're so <laughs> nervous that they're so damn quiet and they just they have a lot to say they're just holding back so much information you know what i mean but i think the other thing and i don't know how much you remember about this but you know, and when we played together before, like I'm pretty quiet at the beginning. Yeah. I think Big Brother 14 is a little bit different because we're thrust in there as like, but I don't, I mean, I felt like there's so many huge personalities there where like, I feel like you, I think we're different in the fact like you're more outgoing and I'm like more reserved. But sure. at the same time, like there was, there were moments when I'm like, you just, I just want to tell, you know, Janelle everything so we can like start doing this. And then it's just like, you can't do that because it's the game. So, so oh, for yeah. the, from the beginning, you're like, okay. So, you know, pretty certain that I'm a trader. I knew you were a trader. And I was like, it's good for me. Cause like, I don't think Dan's going to murder me unless people are like on to Dan and they're like, Dan's so close to Janelle. Why would he murder Janelle? So I was like, you know, we can keep our whole thing of like not talking. He probably won't murder me because if he murders me, then the eyes are going to be on him even more. Like, okay, well, Janelle wasn't a traitor and they're going to start looking at you closely. So I thought strategically, he's probably not going to murder me. I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. And, and I feel oh. like from, from a traitor's standpoint, like, cause I've only seen, I've seen like the U S version and the yeah. one UK, like you don't, you haven't seen that strategy evolve of what you're talking about. Like, okay, you know, yeah. here's a traitor. But like you're not gonna go after them, which is in theory, it's like good game strategy. Right. What's your thoughts on that? Like, how can you extrapolate that to maybe like someone who's like listening to this now from the cast and is like, I don't understand how that's a good strategy. I don't think a lot of people would understand why you wouldn't go after a trader. But my whole thing was, okay, let's keep the traders that we know close to us, so they don't kill us or target us in a banishment, and let's let's keep actively trying to find the other traders and. I think my and Peter's biggest downfall, we only thought it, there was four traders. So I thought, well, if I know half of them, I just need, I, we need to go after the other two. And I think that's why I was always asking you to give me a name. <laughs> I was ready to go after an actual trader. And I was like, dude, give me a trader's name. So I don't get banished because I'm trying to trader hunt. And I was like, Dan knows who the, that's why I was like, Dan's going to give me, I was like, Dan's going to give me this name and it's going to be so great. And we're going to do this great move and we're going to get another trader out. We're going to get a real trader out and people will start trusting you because no one trusted you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be great. 
And unfortunately, you never gave me a name. So, yeah. Yeah, I think there, I mean, I think there was a couple moments of like, okay, hey, like I really wanted to work with you, but I didn't want people to see us together, right? Because there was always that like air of me, you, Parvati, Sandra, yeah. you know, like there was always like a little bit of suspicion on us. You think so though? I don't think anyone was really looking at us like that. Um, I, I did. I, I was just, whether they were not, I was super conscious of like, I can't be seen with these people for X, Y, and Z. But anyway, so, so as, I mean, everything hasn't aired yet, but yeah. when, when you made the decision to like go after me, when was, was that like, cause there was a conversation we had, it was in the hallway, it didn't air, but it's like, you came in my face and it was like, probably the closest you and I have come to like, like, look, this is this. You're like, Dan, give me a name or it's you. And, and I was like, what the, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like what the heck, man? Like, yeah. But like when for you was it like, okay, this is like, there's no turning back. I have to go after Dan. So your name was already up for discussion in my Alliance yeah. and, um, the Larsa banishment that night, um, I had felt like there was heat on me already from MJ. Like she was just thinking I was a traitor, I poisoned Ek and Sue. So I was like, whatever. But we had to, I was like, if we all die, like you guys, actually not, I didn't get to talk to Bergie that night, but it was Peter. It was like, okay, if we die, one of us is gonna die. If we actually make it to breakfast tomorrow, we have to get a traitor because of the numbers in the game. If there's four and we miss this banishment and the next one, they're gonna take really good faithfuls. Like Peter, you're gonna die, I'm gonna die. Trishel's gonna die. Like someone from our alliance is dying. So we've like got a leader. Take... A leader is, is a leader is gonna die. die. And we're gonna be left with MJ and Kevin to work with, and it's not gonna be good. So we need to figure it out. And we all had different opinions on who we knew you and Parvati, but we were like, some people said Phaedra, me and Bergie were on to Sandra. I don't even remember what Trishel said. She just said not CT. So we were all very confused and it was like, unfortunately, like you were the most talked about trader, the most visible to the group. Yeah. Everyone agreed. So I came to you as basically like, yo, I'm throwing you a Hail Mary. I want you to catch it. Like, cause I knew my Alliance was coming for you. Like they knew that I was in the hot seat. Cause they were like, Janelle, like Bravo's voting for you tonight. And I already knew that. Um, it's you or Dan tonight. So I was like, dude, Phaedra's name was out there. And, but I didn't agree with it and I didn't know, but if you would have said Phaedra's name, I would have immediately went to Peter and John. Cause they were like onto her. They were like, she's a lawyer. She's so smart. She owns multiple businesses. She has the profile to do this and do it well. And I was like, oh God, me and Bergie were like, no, not Phaedra. <laughs> well there's a moment when it was like vocal i wasn't in the room but i heard you say there's no way it might have been at breakfast there's no way it could be a housewife when i heard that i was just like yeah a, it's gonna be but, a tough sell and i also knew like that you not like but like you know you like the housewives like they're, they're all super likable and it's like it's yes. you know so so okay so the way i look at it is like we've been on two shows together and mm -hmm you're one of my favorite players of all time like when i when i saw you i'm like i want to work together but i feel like when we play these games we're like we're like neutral and then this one like this one like you know i clearly was way too quiet and we didn't talk enough but i'm just hoping it's somewhere in the maybe in another life that we get to, know. We get a chance to be on the same other, thing. but you know no. we'll see a snake in the grass or something like that um, um <laughs> but people are like oh how come like you didn't you know do x y and z and i'm like i just it's it was just a unique scenario you know yeah i mean i tried to work with you for as long as i could when you're <laughs> put on opposite ends you you know what i mean like you could only do so much for me and i could only do so much for you yeah because we were in other like you were working with parvati and i was working with peter and trishel and bergie yeah so and i will say this i and i know like we can only say so much but at that round table when you get banished like you lit the whole table on fire like it, I, you i remember you going after poverty and i remember like looking at that table being stunned because i'm just like all the stuff i never wanted to come out like yeah. pointing big brother x y and z i'm like janelle just like threw yeah. it up all on the table i had about laying into poverty because i felt like she was just collateral damage because i was like i actually really 
like Parvati. And I was like, I don't want to, but the second, she, great. Like, the second she started backing you up, I was like, I was like, girl, you should not have said that. You should have not said that because now I'm coming for you. And I was like, Parvati, everyone at this table knows you're a traitor. <laughs> Bergie like went after her and she acted like she was shocked, but it's like, dude, we, the people you're working with that are gamers are going to know you guys are traitors. <laughs> We're just trying to stay in the game as long as we can. Like, and my read on Sandra was absolutely false. Obviously she was faithful, but, um, she was also really vocal a lot. She had really pushed for Max banishment and really got me and Bergie to vote for Max, which I didn't think it was that important to even vote him. Like who cares who leaves day two? I mean, I know, I know we've <laughs> talked talk about this a lot, but as because. like a reality TV fan, and I've, I've said this, it's like when you went after Sandra and vice versa, I'm like, mm -hmm. I had an out of body experience. I'm like, this is like so bizarre. Like you have the queen yeah. of big brother, queen of survivor, they're going at each other. I'm like, for at that moment, I'm like, this is gonna be great television because in what world does that happen? When you did that, because like, because I know you like, yeah. like there's Janelle and then there's Jan TV Janelle. I'm like, okay, Janelle just turned up TV Janelle right there. Did you know like that was going to be like a moment or were you just like fighting yeah. for your life? Oh, well, I knew I was going home that night, Dan. So that's why I was like saying to myself, please, Parvati, you don't want to be in this. You don't want to be in this fight. I promise you, girl, you don't want it. You don't want it. And so I was like, I'm just going to go after Dan because my alliance is going after Dan. And honestly, Dan, like I had talked to them before. I was like, if every single one of you votes for Dan and the whole house votes for me, you guys should be safe because there's no way Dan will try to murder you if you, they would lead that back to a murder. So yeah. I was like, you guys should be safe. Just vote, let, let me go for it. And you just vote like, yeah, that's, so we're going for Dan. So I was just trying to protect them because I knew I was going home and I, that's a great faithful move, by the way, because like you're like, hey, I'm going down on my sword and protecting all of you in the process. Oh yeah, I was because because John wasn't protected. I thought I thought for sure John was going to get murdered because I was like, there's no way, you know what I mean? Like, oh, and I'm not doing spoilers, but um, yeah. I was worried about poor little John because I was like, he didn't play for shields, like he doesn't have the confidence of the shield going into this banishment and you know calling people out because we were all like let's let's just call them out we've got you know we got shields they're never gonna know who's got it and um i really was worried but i was like john this is gonna save you because he was like well should i burn my and like it doesn't matter like if you vote for dan that'll make you safe um so yeah i think going into the banishment dan i was just so i'm gonna save my life um i'm gonna take some serious shots at you um, I'm going to make great TV and I'm not taking cheap shots by the way, either. No, like I'm backing no. this up with evidence yeah. <laughs> and, um, I'm going to make great TV and, um, again, the win isn't in the win. It's asking to be back, back on a show again and again. So I think Sandra and I's fight will go down. One of the biggest fights of the season, oh. I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, and for like competition reality show fans, like it's just like something that you would just never picture happening. And that, you know, you have to give credit to Sharon and NBC for taking these. And I don't know if this if surprised you at all before we wrap up stuff on Traders is like they, NBC has taken like familiar, well known reality TV personalities from other networks and put them in like a mixing pot and like let. Like, did that surprise you that it's taken this long for you to go on a non CBS show? Like, or do you just think that's, it just is what it is? It just, well, I know, you know, Sharon comes from CBS. And yeah. so she knows that we are good at what we do. Um, and I think it's a great concept. I think other networks are foolish to not do this kind of strategy to get multiple fans in to watch a show. I mean, this is the most, the high, like it's number one for a reason. We have fans from all across the board tune into this. Like everyone in the country is watching this show right now because they know so many different people on the show. I would imagine um, and that you not, I want to say picked up, but you have probably have a lot of fans from Bravo rooting for you because I feel like you kind of fit that like, mold of like, oh, I could see her on The Real Housewives yeah. of Minneapolis. Look, it's the housewife of Big Brother. Like, because <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of give that vibe sometimes. 
so yes, they're they very much love the the friendship that I have with Tamra and Phaedra. They even love the drama that I have with Larsa. Um, they love it. They live for that, you know. And I'm not one to bring up drama, and I don't want to like put yeah. any like magnifying glass on stuff. But when you, we'll get to that. But so when when you get banished, you're sitting in the mm-hmm. circle. When did the game like end for you? Like the second you walked out of there, you're like, I'm good. I'm like okay with this experience. Or did you go back to the to of location and like when did you feel like you got over it and like you're like okay i'm cool with what i did the game's not over till me and for me until peter trishel john or Berge win traders too so okay. i was very actively like if one of them doesn't win i'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> so like even now you're like hey like but like i'm saying for you as like a for competitor me, like, on the show i'm very competitive so i was like Someone from my alliance needs to win this season. Like, I'm not going to die in vain. Like, you guys have to win. And so when people did start coming off the show, I was just like, oh, my God, no, 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 no. I was devastated. Absolutely devastated every single one of my alliance members. No spoilers. No, we can't talk spoilers. But, but, but like, in terms of, like, encapsulating, like, what you did on the show, when you walked away, did you feel like, hey, like, like, I'm happy with, you know, obviously you want to stay lo- as long as you possibly can, but with what you did on the show and everything after. Yeah, I was very happy. I mean, as much as people say, oh, you can't, could you come to play to win? I just came to play. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even come for the money necessarily, the prize pot of sharing, you know, 250. I'm not trying to like say that it's nothing, but. You know, that's not a life changing amount for me by any means. I wanted to play a very aggressive game and I did just that. So. So, okay. so as as we kind of wrap things up, you know, what has been your. um, Reception to castmates that like, I guess I'm just a flat out say like I've been surprised that people have come off the show who like, I thought like everyone's super professional. Like when the cameras were on, it's like, okay, you saw everyone elevate. Yeah. Have you been surprised about anything post show? In some of the cast members that they take things so personally blocking people, this and that. And it's just such a shame. You know, we're all from the same season. I don't understand why we all can't be one family. Like that's how I am with big brother. Like I, talk to everyone from previous seasons i don't ever hold bad blood um but there are people that are taking things so personally why do you think that is it's their first time they've never done this they've never been tricked they've never been lied to um they're embarrassed i don't i don't really know no i I, it's it's it was it's interesting to see for sure so so as things like wrap up on the traders and what it, will you take away from this experience as like, Hey, like in your, not com- necessarily comparing, but in your grand sc- scheme of you being on television, what will you take from this experience that you look back on with like some fondness or be like, Oh, that was cool. Oh, every single moment that I spent in the castle and on the grounds was so important to me. And I was living in the moment and I loved every single second of it, to be honest with you. Like, I loved trying to figure out who the traders were, even though I was wrong sometimes. It was so fun. Like, I love murder mysteries. I love to try and think about things and figure it out. And um, this was like the perfect game for me. I loved playing. What What was something that happened or very challenging about this experience for you, whether like gameplay wise or production wise? Gameplay? Oh, um, hmm. What was challenging? I would say I don't, I did not like the amount of time that we had to strategize a day. I found that very difficult. I mean, I would like to strategize for like four hours a day, you know, Um, really talk to people. But unfortunately, we're only giving like, what, 35 minutes a day to talk to people, not even one on ones. So um, more time would have been nice from production, but I get that they want it to be not so strategic that they don't want the show to be like super strategic where you're like, Oh my God, these guys are masterminds or whatever. It's gotta be kind of off the cup, off the fly or whatever. Like, 
oh, all right, let's do, let's do this or let's talk to this person. It's got to almost be like a mystery. And I get that, but more time would have been nice. And then, so now as this is your fifth show? No, I mean, I guess fourth franchise, it's, you've been on, I think it's your seventh show? Big Brother four times seventh show. Is there anything out there that you're open to doing or are you open to doing more shows in the near future? I'm open to doing anything. You know, I also did House Hunters last year whatever you did how did it um, go i did great it was yeah. fun um i found my clients their dream home i helped them make some decisions um i think anything i can do you know reality tv where i'm myself and i'm selling houses i can also do competition shows um i think deal or no deal island that i'm just a gamer dan like i love playing these games so much as much as i would love to be like i would love a show on x y and z it's like Gosh, I really do love competing. I think I always will. And I think that's that was one of the unique things about this experience. And and tell me if you feel the same way is that I felt like everyone there was bought in, and it's like, mm -hmm. all right, we're all gonna play this to yeah. the best of our ability. And and I don't know, like in your real life, outside of like competing in real estate, is there anything else that gives you that same like, hey, like I gotta fight for this or competitive itch like do you do anything else in your life that not really anymore yeah. i mean no i think reality tv is like my only competitive outlet that's why it's become a hobby to me dan um i don't really know how i, I guess sales i'm pretty i'm pretty competitive with other realtors <laughs> um i love to brag about who's got the listing <laughs> who's got the Dean. Um, you know, I, I love sales and I love being recognized for my sales at my company, my office. So I guess sales to me is my only business wise competitive outlet. Got it. So as we, as we wrap up the traders and as things like play out, we know who you're going to be rooting for. Yeah. Um, but where, where can people keep in touch with you and where are you the most active so people can follow you on online? Um, I think I'm the most active on Instagram. I do love the gram. So Janelle Perzina. Okay. Um, I do not post on TikTok. Like I may hear it there, but it's just really not that. I don't love it. Um, and then Twitter, of course. I love to tweet my my thoughts. And they can sometimes be controversial. I don't know. Like I'm just tweeting whatever I think in that moment. And, love sometimes, tweeting me. and sometimes some of your best, like... You do like an extra level, like on Twitter, where it's like you give so there you can subscribe to you on Twitter when you do that, because I'm always fascinated on the different levels of social media. When you tweet on like for subscribers only, what is your perspective on that? Like, what are you trying to provide to Because like sometimes I'll see your tweet and it's like a sentence of like, yeah. and then it cuts off. I'm like, man, I really want to see what Janelle's talking about. I'll just dive into deeper of like what I know, like what's going on, I think. I do, I go on and I go, it's it's not even live. Like I just go into my own Twitter space with like my subscribers and I answer questions and we talk about a lot of times during the summer, it's about Big Brother, um, but it could be any TV show that I'm watching and I watch a lot of television. So it's really just pop culture, TV based. I go in there, my subscribers ask questions and we just talk live. It's kind of like what you do on Twitch, right? Yeah, very similar. What other shows do you watch? Because you say you watch a lot of TV. Like, what are some of your favorite shows that you're watching now? Oh, I watch a lot of, well, I'm a big historical drama person. So I really? love, yeah. And then anything reality television, it doesn't even have to be like competition based. Huge Love Island fan. Like, I mean, I don't know if you know this, Dan, but um, during Love Island, I was such a huge fan of Bergie's that I actually DM'd him. I followed him before I even knew him. What? And, well, yeah, because he's from Minnesota. And I said, great job representing Minnesota because he did so well on his show and he was so beloved. And I just really love how he evolved on his show as a character. And I had reached out to him and I said, great job representing Minnesota. Like, love you on the show. Because I did. I, I really loved him on the show. And he read that and said, thank you. Before we had met at the castle. So, I mean, 
obviously that helped me too because he was like oh my god Janelle, i want to work with you <laughs> i never knew that yeah. so you are a big fan of like so you like love island you said historical dramas like what what historical shows do you like to watch um, oh god any of them uh <laughs> um bridgerton okay. like love to death um anything like the crown um all of the seasons of the crown anything with royalty historical as long as there's drama involved in like a slight love story like i'm so in so yeah all right last last thing i wanted to end with janelle and this is just i'm gonna make a prediction that within the next two shows you go on you're gonna win one i just feel like i just feel, i just i'm just i'm putting it on 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 film here in 2024 i just feel like you're due like you've come really but close like, a couple of times now go ahead i don't care about winning dan i care about being asked to come back making my phone ring so i get real estate deals okay that's the most important thing is my business always so for me i'm not gonna change it up and do something and you know win a show where i'm like you know this diabolical genius like it's just not me like but, i'm just gonna but, be me but i so, think that's but i think you can you're gonna win a show being you i just think it's just a matter of time well i'm not playing big brother again are no, you I, no yeah i, I, think I mean absolutely not i i just can't see myself in those cheap mattresses with that horrible linen <laughs> you know with playing with 20 year olds like i just can't do it at this point thank god i had caser in the house last time thank god or I would have self evicted. I, I mean, I, don't, I felt like the traders was like, as much as it can be like an adult reality TV yeah. experience for us. We're like big brother was like, we're younger and you know, we would put on like lemon suits and stuff like that. It's embarrassing. And honestly, the traders is a more fun show. I, and I think for the fans too, I think going back to your early thing, I think the reason why traders two was so popular is because the average age of the cast member is like 43. I mean, these are people that have been on reality TV for, forever. And the people, they're also relatable too. Like, you know, it's great to have 20 somethings and they bring a lot of like energy and they can do like the showman's thing. But at the end of the day, like a, a large portion of the demographic is actually like the 35 plus. Like, those are the ones that are like, they've been watching us for years. So I think putting in an older cast is important. And I hope. I hope CBS keeps taking notes because I would continue watching Big Brother if the cast were a little bit older. I don't really want to watch a bunch of casts of like, you know, they're all like 24 and they all kind of look alike. Like I want to see like some older women, like your season to me was the best season that I've ever watched in my life because you put four women over the age of four, 30 in there and of course, there's going to be fights and drama. And for me as a viewer, that is what I'm looking for. I want to see people fighting. That's what I want to see. I should have seen this article. I saw this article. It was like ranking the traders by their age. And I was scrolling. I'm like, I had no, like some people's ages. I had no idea. Like, I'm like. I couldn't believe <laughs> MJ's age. I was like, there's. I wasn't going to say any names. Well, if there's an article. I was shocked. I know. I, mean, she I know. Looked fabulous. Yeah. No. I just. I mean. But I think to, to like some a lot of interesting things happened because a lot of people had an extensive life experience that. Oh. You know. Well, for me, like, her age threw me off because of the age of her son. So I was like, okay, yeah. Like, if your son's four, like, I don't know why I did that. I was like, you must be like thirty-five or thirty-six. Yeah, I mean, I thought the whole cast looked amazing. And when I was scrolling that, I was just like, wow, I, you know, I expected to be like one of the oldest or near the top. And I, you know, but anyways, um, as we wrap up things here, Janelle, as, you know, all the episodes are not out. Is yeah. there, um, we still have a finale to shoot mm -hmm. in, in, are you going to New York? Yeah, are you? Yeah, I'm going to New York. So I'll, I'll see you there. I'll but you are you, week. yeah, are you with the finale? Are you? expecting what is your expectations for the finale when you go oh my gosh i mean what am i expecting i expect some cheap shots from the bravo people for sure um but you know i expect some hurt feelings i expect 
people to be absolutely pissed off because they're taking things so personally. They're not really computing that this is a game. Like the people that did this to you or played you or this, this or that, like it's a game, baby. Like that's all it is to us. We don't care. Sorry. <laughs> well, I look forward to uh, seeing you in New York and Janelle, thanks so much for coming on. And it was great to like sit down and like talk to you yeah. and, and, and catch up and, and, oh. uh, up with you i'm so sorry i targeted you no it's janelle and that's the thing it's like when you came after me i was stunned but i'm also like like i get it it's not like there's only so many people you can go off of but and i think that's why i always appreciate you as a reality tv competitor it's like you're gonna play hard you're gonna make the best yeah. move you think it is and it's not like because like i have bad skin or something you're just gonna no. you know, yeah you know i mean it was oh. literally and for me to be like oh my god i was i was never gunning for you it was more like Peter was gunning for you and I work with Peter. So you know what I mean? It's kind of like oh. you and the Danielle thing. Like Danielle's gunning for me. You're her number one. And I'm like, Peter's gunning for Dan. And like, I have to support this man. <laughs> like, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know? Cool. So. Well, awesome. Janelle, thank you so much for coming on. We're going to follow you on Twitter. If you don't at Janelle Perzina and also Instagram for all Janelle's insights. And um, sometimes little snark i just feel like on, online you're very like straightforward and like share your your insight twitter? yeah oh i'm really straight up yeah i don't let anything slip on twitter like a lot of people don't really give the real juice like i'm gonna let you know on twitter <laughs> janelle thanks so much for coming on i'll see you soon thanks you thanks dan talk Bye. to you later